This blue bundle of joy has been out for over two years now, which means I'm well justified to make a dedicated review, or a long-term review, shall I say, on the HomePod Mini. But rather than bore you with the specifics, which has probably been covered at least a thousand times on YouTube at this point, I'm going to get right into the good, bad, and the ugly about the HomePod Mini and answer the question of whether or not this is the smart speaker you should invest in going into 2023. So let's get started. Everything from that near-perfect round design to that beautiful mesh grill enclosing the rest of the HomePod mini to that fantastic flat surface design at the top with those minimalist plus minus buttons and those intuitive touch Siri controls make the HomePod mini one of the most beautiful small smart speakers going into 2023. I definitely think it's aged well and will continue to do so. At the same time, I appreciate the high quality braided USB-C cable. However, this is where my problem comes with Apple as well. The fact that this cable is hardwired into the HomePod mini really makes you want to cry. Firstly, should you accidentally damage this cable or should it become defective over time, there is no way to replace this cable making your HomePod mini essentially useless. On top of that, despite being called mini, this is very much a stationary product, about as stationary as a mountain. Simply put, let's say you want to move your HomePod mini from one room to another for temporary reasons, or if you've got a complex wiring setup like me and it's not easy to unplug the HomePod mini, you have no option but to unplug it to move it around or keep it where it is. This makes the mini pretty useless as a small speaker as its size gives you no real portable benefit aside from just looking petite and cute. I really wish Apple gave a little bit more thought over here and made this a more utilitarian design like we see with Google's Home Mini or Amazon's Alexa speakers. Functionality on the HomePod Mini is a two-part question. So the first part being the everyday usability. And of course, needless to say, the HomePod Mini should really only be used within the confines of the Apple ecosystem. In short, don't use a Android or non-Apple device. Otherwise, buy a different speaker if that's your use case. Save yourself some precious money. Now, with that said, I love the little attention to detail within that ecosystem. For example, transferring via AirPlay 2 from your Mac or your iPhone or iPad is a seamless process. You can easily do it from within the operating system itself. No funky Bluetooth menus. It's just there as long as we're on the same Wi-Fi network. Now, of course, what I love are the little gestures. For example, with your iPhone, you can conveniently come within close proximity of the HomePod mini and the audio you're playing or streaming will seamlessly transition over to the HomePod mini. This process is so smooth. It might seem a little gimmicky to you, but trust me, when you use it, it's addictive. That's just how smooth it is. And I wholeheartedly use it all the time now. The second component, of course, is the audio capability of the HomePod mini. And let me tell you, the highs and the mids on the HomePod mini are one of the most well-balanced ones I've seen on a speaker of this class and arguably in any class. They don't sound over the top, they're well controlled, and there's almost never any form of distortion when you're listening to music. And no matter what type of music it is, unless you download some shady website and horrible audio quality, it always sounds crisp. Now, one of the compromises Apple does make, undoubtedly, is with its lows. Bass intensive music just doesn't sound like it has a lot of oomph, especially when compared to the likes of Amazon's Echo Dot speaker, for example, which is cheaper, but has a lot more punching power. And I think this is deliberately done to maximize clarity, and it's an approach Apple has taken. So if you do listen to a lot of bass intensive music, you may find it a little underwhelming, but in terms of the overall range of music you can listen to this on this speaker, I guess, without compromising audio quality is quite impressive. Now, I did myself one better and I got two HomePod minis in a stereo configuration. Let me tell you, while it won't fix the underwhelming bass problem, not only does it add more overall volume, it adds a lot more depth to any room you put them in. It just feels like the audio has become 3D all of a sudden, thanks to the awesome split Apple does in the stereo configuration at a computational level. And I can wholeheartedly vouch for getting two HomePod minis in a stereo configuration over just one. You're probably curious how the HomePod mini sounds in a stereo configuration. I was able to find some copyright free music, so have a quick listen for yourself and let me know what you think.
With a $100 price tag, I think the HomePod Mini is still one of the more reasonably priced products in the world of Apple. It provides ample sound quality, it has a lot of functionality, and it also has a great design overall. Now, it's not perfect. As I mentioned in this review, there are definitely some things that need improvement or to an extent even hinder functionality. But despite all this, I think the HomePod Mini is a great companion speaker for Apple-based devices. Though again, if you're using anything other than Apple devices, I would not recommend this in any possible scenario. But let me know what you think of the HomePod Mini, if you would be interested in getting one, and of course, if you have one, what your experience has been like. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one.